Hello YouTube, I'm going to be doing a little bit more in-depth look at the proposed CH HOTAS solutions, what we've learned over the week since the GamesCon announcement and presentation on stage where they showed a mock-up of at least the low-end HOTAS and a rendering of the higher-end model, and kind of give you my thoughts, ideas, as well as I guess you could say concerns as well. First off, as I'm going to be completely honest, you can see my live reaction. I posted that video earlier on YouTube. I'll post a link down in the description and probably one of those handy dandy tile box things that you can click on and, and go watch that live reaction. It's about 10, 15 minute long video uh, from the actual presentation from the announcement and then me essentially reacting to it as I learned about it. Now I've had a week to kind of learn a little bit more information, try to find out some questions that I kind of had nagging in the back of my mind, uh, but I will say, for the most part, I don't see anything there yet still that convinces me to change to their HOTAS for Star Citizen over my current preference, which is CH, uh, well, the CH HOTAS that I have, which is a fighter stick, pro throttle, pro pedals. Some other people prefer the combat stick over the fighter stick for different reasons, but that's kind of half a dozen of one, six of the other personal preference type thing. Uh, either stick is very good. It's just depending if you want more hats or more buttons. Some people like more buttons. Other people like more hats. E to each their own, and neither side is really wrong about that. So with that being said, let's kind of take a little bit more in-depth look at just some overall questions and concerns that I have from this kind of initial announcement. So we're going to go over kind of what we know in, in general basic terms, and that is Saytech is wanting to embrace an open development model similar to all of Star Citizen and CIG is doing, and therefore will be soliciting community advice, feedback, comments. Frankly, I wouldn't get my hopes up too much on that, especially since the low-end HOTAS looks like it's already hardware mocked up, meaning I don't think that they're going to go through and do a lot of physical changes to the design at least the exterior build of the design. They're essentially putting what looks to be uh, an X-52 stick on a Fly 5 chassis. The other thing we know is don't look for either of these HOTAS solutions to be available until sometime late next year. They may do a pre-order cycle this Christmas holiday buying season, but I would be a little bit concerned and hesitant to do that, and I'll tell you why later on. So those are a couple of things that we know at this point in regards to these HOTAS solutions. The most important factor that we don't know anything about right now is what are the internal guts of these joysticks going to be based off of? Are they going to be potentiometer based sticks, Hall effect sensor sticks, force sensing sticks? We have no information, or at least I wasn't able to find any information on that. My initial guess would be that both sticks will be Hall Effect sensor based because the X52 and the X55 are. Uh, therefore, there are probably very little that they would have to do in their design and manufacturing process in order to just use existing Hall Effect sensor technologies that they're already familiar with. Now, owners of the X65, I think, got their hopes up whenever they heard X65 based stick uh, for force sensing technology. However, force sensing technology when it comes right down to it, to the consumer base, is very, very polarizing. People either absolutely love and adore it, or they absolutely despise and hate it. I've never met anybody who had any type of middle ground where, oh, I kind of like that. Yeah, it wasn't bad. I never heard that from anybody. They either loved it or they hated it. Roughly about a 60-40 split there. So because of that, I have a feeling we won't be seeing force sensing as the technology used. Interestingly enough, this also happens in the real world. Uh, and the F-16 was the first fighter to use force sensing technology, and a lot of the pilots absolutely hated it. It's why they had to go back and redesign the force sensing stick in the F-16 in order to give about an inch, inch and a half of feedback in all directions so that pilots still had that physical feedback when maneuvering the fighter. Interestingly enough, I've heard the exact same thing from airline pilots who have transitioned from, say, Boeing or Douglas aircraft over to Airbus aircraft. Airbuses also use a force sensing stick in their aircraft, and a lot of pilots absolutely hate it because there's no feedback. So that kind of mirrors what happens in the real world with that technology and why I don't anticipate seeing it when it comes to either of these joysticks. So a couple things to keep in mind there. So let's take a broader look at the lower end solution, the $150 option, same price point as an X52 
uh, or X52 Pro, which is what a lot of the backer community was acting or asking for, expecting when it came to price points for these devices. So this is certainly an option for the lower end of the market. The throttle and the stick will be separable, much like the T-Flight X Hotas. And then as you saw previously there, you'll be able to hook it into the sides of their Star Citizen branded keyboards, as long with a custom button display and things like that. So they'll probably set it up sell it as one big uh, combined unit or you can buy different modules and put it together depending on how much desk space you have. One of the nice things about this HOTAS from its hardware mock-up here is the fact that it looks like it is going to be fairly compact so if you don't have a lot of desk space and this is an issue I mean the X55 takes up a lot of space the CH stuff takes up a fair amount of space same thing the Warthog takes up also a lot of space so for people with smaller desks and stuff like that that might be an option for them or if you want to combine it in with uh, basically your keyboard you might end up with basically an all-in-one device in one place on your desk so if you don't have a lot of desk space something to consider now these trackballs I think that's more of a gimmick it's an idea I'm not sure how well that's going to ultimately work out for especially aiming purposes uh, or even controlling your strafing thrusters it might be good for scrolling through menus or have other options to use it for uh, maybe flipping through weapon groups or something like that but for aiming purposes and stuff like that I don't think they're going to get quite the mileage out of it that they were exactly hoping for uh, in terms of that use. Now the big question I still have here is the internals. The X52 and the X52 Pro was one of the worst joysticks, in fact it was the worst joystick I've ever used in 30 years. Very inaccurate, large dead zone, not very precise, unless you added additional market or magnets to it. I mean additional neodymium magnets are like 10 bucks on Amazon. Not that expensive, it was a five minute upgrade uh, in order to accomplish so I hope they use either stronger magnets or they just bring the magnets a little bit closer to the sensors either one of those two design changes to an X52's internal would turn it from a absolutely horrendously bad stick to one that is at least a little bit better than an Extreme 3D Pro or a T-Flight X Hotas maybe not quite a uh, T16000M but if they paid a little attention they can make it just as good as the T16000M so this is their high-end HOTAS proposal. Now they're saying it's going to be X65 based, but I don't think that's going to be internal components, i.e. force sensing. I think what they're talking about is the die cast metal construction. The X65 was made of metal, and this is what the X65F looked like. You'll notice it has those kind of buttons out there that you'll also see their button panels on the throttle hanging out there. But the throttle itself and the stick itself actually look like the X55 stick. Now in my kind of initial announcement hearing about the rumors of the stick I was said that I was looking for basically an X55 Pro and I think in many respects that's what this is going to end up being on the inside is essentially an X55 Pro and the die cast metal X65 kind of chassis especially in the throttle but the biggest I think kind of swing and miss on this design is this multi-function display which may or may not be a touch screen nobody seems to really be able to nail down hundred percent and the reason why I say that is its positioning if you have any forearms at all, your forearm, if you look down, is going to be blocking anywhere from a third to a half, maybe even more of the screen. Furthermore, if you intend to use virtual reality boxes or virtual reality technology like an Oculus Rift or a Steam VR or whatever happens to come out in the next couple of years in terms of that technology, you're not going to be looking at that screen anyway. Furthermore, you're not going to take your head off the screen or your eyes off the screen to look down and make adjustments or something on your stick and your hand leave the stick in the middle of combat. In non-combat situations, that might be doable, but in combat, that's going to be a very, very bad idea and get people killed uh, in the Persistent Universe. So, I like the idea and concept of a multifunction screen. I like the idea and concept of a multifunction API uh, where people can write some Android and or iOS apps for their tablets and things like that. I think those are all very good, but overall I don't feel that the display screen is going to be one of those kick it out of the park type features, at least not for me. Now I do have two very valid concerns with Mad Cats. One being their lackluster quality control. The X55 has just not held up. People that I know that's been using it pretty much 20-30 hours a week over the past year have said that just not holding up. 73 out of 180, 108 have had to RMA at least one device. The other one is they've not turned a profit since 2011. Now they did have a positive net income in the quarter ending March 30th of 2015, 
But that being said, they're wholly dependent on the success of Rock Band 4, which will be released in October of this year, so we'll know by the end of the year whether or not they've been able to sell enough of those controllers to save the company. They do have financing extended out to about $80 million available to them, but that still kind of begs the question, if Rock Band 4 isn't a huge success, it very well could prove financially disastrous and Mad Cats may not be around in order to build a Star Citizen branded HOTAS or other keyboards, mice, and controllers. Uh, if, especially if it takes another year to year and a half before we see them on the shelves anywhere. So that would be something that I would be more concerned about pre-orders. I will be doing a future video this year, uh, probably in October, if not early November, over a 2015 HOTAS and Joysticks Buyer's Guide, where by that point we will hopefully know a little bit more information, especially if CIG decides to open it up to pre-orders this Christmas in anticipation of deliverables sometime next year. So thank you very much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and see you next time.